Picking up from the last movie, we're continuing to build our triangle lighting setup. We've currently got a key light and a fill light. Let's now create some rim lights. Just to avoid any performance issue when duplicating lights, I'm going to hold the scene updates in my Arnold render view. And I'll also store a snapshot of this rendering with only the key and fill lights. So create a snapshot of that. And then let's duplicate our key spotlight. Select it, grab the move tool, hold down the shift key, and drag up in the top viewport to make a duplicate. In the clone options dialog, it'll be a copy. Let's rename it Rim Spot 001 and click OK. Let's see what that looks like by itself. We'll select the fill light and disable it temporarily in the modify panel. Likewise with the key light, select it and disable it. And then we can do an interactive production rendering of only that rim light. In the Arnold render view, restore the scene updates. So that's the effect of the rim light. We can make this better. I want to illuminate the edges and not so much the top of the radio. So once again, with the move tool active, we can select that rim light. We can pan or track in that left viewport with the middle mouse button and maybe bring that rim light down. I've got some values that we can plug in with that rim light selected. We can plug in the values for the X position, 34, Y position of 54, moving it back somewhat, and a Z position of only 20. We want to move that down. Now we're getting a nice subtle effect there of that rim lighting. Cool. So let's make another duplicate. And again, I'll hold the scene updates, pan around with a middle mouse button, hold down the shift key, and drag to create a duplicate in that top viewport. In the clone options dialog, we'll make it a copy, and the name is automatically Rim Spot 002. Click OK and restore the scene updates. There we've got rim lighting on both sides. Once again, we can fine tune that rim light's position. I've got some values for that. We'll give it an X position of negative 50. The Y position of 54 is fine. The Z position will bring down to only 13 centimeters. Now we've got strong side lighting here on the left. Okay, that's our rim lighting. We can store that as a snapshot and compare it to the fill and key light. So here's fill and key only, and here is rim lighting only. We'll go back to a live interactive production rendering. Let's combine these two by re-enabling the other lights. So we can select our key spot, re-enable it, select our rim disk light, and re-enable that as well. And having done that, it looks like we have too much rim lighting. It's too bright. So let's bring the exposure down of those rim lights. I'll select one of them. In the Modify panel, set its exposure value to 5. And likewise with the other one, select it and set its exposure value to 5 as well. So that's a much more balanced illumination. OK, let's make another snapshot. And we can compare these. Here's our version with no rim lighting. And here's a version with the rim lighting added. All right, cool. So we'll go back to a live interactive production rendering. Now I want to illustrate an issue that might come up. We're not seeing any problem here in our physical camera rendering, but if we changed our light's position or the framing of our composition, we might see a problem in which we get a big hot spot from the reflection on the floor. We can work around that by excluding the lights from the floor. So let me illustrate that. We want to render the perspective view to see the problem. And in order to render the perspective view, we'll need to unlock the render viewport. So we'll close the Arnold render view. Go into the render setup where we previously locked the view to render. So disable that padlock icon. Close the render setup. Give focus to the perspective view by right clicking in it. And then once again, launch the Arnold render view. And start the interactive production rendering again. Once that starts up, we'll see a very strong hotspot here from our rim lighting. All we need to do is exclude the rim lights from the floor. And then there will be no illumination from the rim lights on that floor. The floor is currently on a frozen layer. So let's go to the Layer Explorer. Open up the Floor layer and select the floor. And then in the Modify panel, we can add a modifier called Arnold Properties. 
then open up the light group section and we see an enable switch and two fields included and excluded. When we turn on the enable switch suddenly we get no illumination on that floor at all. All we're getting is reflections. There are no lights illuminating the floor because they're all in the excluded section here. Well, I do want some light from the key. And if we orbit around the perspective view here to get closer to our actual framing, we'll see this more clearly. So I do want the floor to be illuminated by the key spot, but by nothing else. So I'll double click on that key spot, and that moves it over into the included section. Now the only light illuminating that floor is the key light. Later, we are going to use the sky dome to produce reflections on the floor. So we want the sky dome to be included as well. So let's double click sky dome. Currently, the sky dome is disabled, so we see no effect, but we're just getting ready for the last stage of our production. That's how to add rim lighting and control the exclusion of lights from objects using the Arnold light groups.